it's an overwhelming world out there, yet people think they can go to Dr. Google and get all the advice that they need right on that. You said person. Dr. Google? Yeah, 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 <laughs> Dr. Google, right? Yeah, that's, that's and, good. and it's true because yeah. there's so much information out there, but it becomes overwhelming. Yeah. So how do you know where to go? And again, with all the amazing marketing strategies people have out there now, you may be landing on certain aspects and certain pages that may not be delivering the most applicable advice, let's just mm -hmm. say. And what we try to do is really help people, again, connect their body to their mind and back down to their body, mind to body. Mm -hmm. um, because I think few people are feeling lost. Mm -hmm. And we have empathy for that because, you know, this slogan, move better, live happier, it embodies the internal struggle that we all have, mm -hmm. which is living happy. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Hustle With Purpose. I'm your host, Romeo Marquez, Jr. Our goal for this show is to introduce you to people and ideas that will help you turn your passion into a profession, ideas into action, and your creativity into a career so that you live a life with purpose. Today's guest is Joey Salgado, co-owner of Progressive Motion Physiotherapy. Joey received his bachelor's in biology at the University of Washington and earned his doctorate degree from University of the Pacific. After graduating, he spent time at various work settings, but it wasn't until 2014 where he was presented an opportunity to open up his own practice. He is a huge advocate to developing a growth mindset to get you wherever you want in life, whether it be personally or professionally. He's a true believer that in order to move better and live happier, it is important that you invest in your own mind. Let's welcome Joey Salgado. Joey, 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 thank you so much for being here, bro. Thank you for having me, man. Of course. So let's start from the beginning. How did you get from where you were to where you are today? Man, um, I think the crazy thing is, is the beginning of this recent journey was from really meeting you um, four or five years ago. Um, I had just got done with maybe two to three I would say two to three years of working at different clinics as a physiotherapist. And frankly, I was feeling pretty lost. Mm -hmm. And I had asked my barber, Gino, who I believe was cutting <laughs> you at the time. And I said, who can I talk to, man? I need to, I need to really speak to someone that's gonna kind of unlock me because I feel like I'm blocked. And mm -hmm. reached out to you on Instagram, man. And that literally was the beginning of, I would say, me discovering myself and now, to now I'm owning, co-owning uh, Progressive Motion Physiotherapy and practicing in Menlo Park and hopefully elevating other people to, to do their thing in their life. So how did you get into like this industry? Physical ther therapy. Yeah. Um, well, physiotherapy, physical therapy. Physical therapy for the, for the people that don't, don't know what physio is. Okay. Um, but physiotherapy, physical therapy is the same exact thing. Okay. Got into it because of my natural love for sports. I grew up playing baseball, basketball, and I was just so fascinated with the human body. And what I also saw was um, my mother dealing with a lot of aches and pains and just seeing people all around struggling in their own body. Mm -hmm. And I saw the effect on mental health. On um, When people don't feel good in their body, how can they ever perform and show themselves out to the world? And right. um, being Filipino and having a lot, of, uh, a lot of people in my family working as nurses, I knew that I wanted to do something a little different. Mm -hmm. And so being a PT seemed to be a good fit, and I had no idea that mm -hmm. it would lead to what we're doing right now and many other things that we've been doing. So what does a typical day look like for you? A typical day? All right, so I, I usually wake up at 5, 5.15 a.m. Oh, you were early riser. Early riser because first treatment's at 8 a.m. usually, depending on the day, but I'll just kind of give you the general sense. Um, 5.15, wake up, write in my five-minute journal to express three thoughts of gratitude, three things that's going to make today amazing. That's right. And then an I am Love daily it. affirmation. That's right. Learned by you. <laughs> um, and then also I go, I go right into my cold shower. Um, I go to a one-minute cold shower. Um, that basically shocks my nervous system to get ready for my day. But what it's also taught me is to, to really make decisions on things that I don't necessarily want to do. Because, you know, 
bright and early in the morning, it's real cold. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to hop in the cold shower, but it's taught my brain and my body to just make a decision, do it, and then move on. And and then, you know, I go to go to Menlo and I do my morning cars routine, which is a mobility routine that mm -hmm. uh, we do to make sure we prime our joints up. And mm -hmm. I start treating from eight to basically seven p.m. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's a busy day of hands-on one-on-one care. So what educate us? Physical therapy, mm -hmm. right? Physiotherapy. Physiotherapy. There's yeah. a massage therapist. There's, there's all that treatment. Like mm -hmm. break down what you do that's different from other. So fields. if I had a if I had to talk about it in more simplistic terms, um, I think what you'll see, massage, chiropractor, and trainers, mm. there's gonna be a lot of blend, I think, as you continue to kind of move forward in health. But what I will say is both Josh and I and at least within our practice, we're extremely movement based. So we'll use our hands, we'll use different sets of tools to, to help people move better, right? Whether it's like some kind of ache or stiffness in their body and they just wanna perform better, mm -hmm. we'll help them with our hands on, whether it's tissue work, cupping with movement, using certain soft tissue techniques to kind of open up their body. And then we train them on top of that using a variety of movement um, strategies to help them capture their mobility so they can do whatever they want in their life, whether that's through sports or just being able to help a mother take care of her child mm -hmm. while feeling comfortable. Right. So, yeah. So I know you worked with uh, some phenomenal people, one of them being um, Andre Ward. Yes. Uh, yeah. World champion boxer. What was it like working with him and what do you think makes him stand out or makes him a world-class athlete Man. based on your you know, work with him? Uh, attention to detail and relentless, relentless pursuit of something that he wants uh, with a deeper purpose. Because um, I remember specifically working with him, I think it was like 11 p.m. Um, late at night in his uh, camp apartment in Union City. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I go, yo, Dre, like, what does it take to be great? Because at this time, I think he was 30, you know, mm. so undefeated, you know, and he goes, bro, look at the time. And I looked up, it was 11 p.m. And I was like, OK. And then he goes, this is the kind of thing that you don't get celebrated for, but you have to do in the dark to shine in the light. Oh, you know? so he <laughs> right. Good. And so he goes, look what you're doing right now. No one's going to see this. Mm -hmm. And so that I, I kind of I held I held from our conversations. And that's why I enjoy Dre, mm -hmm. um, because what he needed me for was a lot of more body work. So there wasn't a lot of movement, sure. which I wish I was able to share, but I don't think it was my time for that stuff yet. Yeah. Um, but so we got a chance to have good conversations and that's why I feel super blessed to had to be in, I guess, in his presence that early in my career. Right, right. Now, please break this down. There's a connection between the mind and body and spirit, mm -hmm. but focusing on like the mind and body, like what is that correlation and how does that like serve you in great ways in regards to the work that you do? Well, I think if you kind of, if you just look at how life is currently set up with all of us, um, there's more time on the road, there's more demand at people's desks, so people are hammering away at the keyboards and people are stressed out with technology because people have access to us immediately now, whether it's through email, messaging, whatever it is. So there's a higher demand on our, on our life and the stresses have increased dramatically. So what Josh and I are helping people with is basically giving them the Google map to their body back. And it's an overwhelming world out there, yet people think they can go to Dr. Google and get all the advice that they need right on that. You said Dr. Google? Yeah. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Dr. Google, right? Yeah, that's, that's and, good. and it's true because yeah. there's so much information out there, but it becomes overwhelming. Yeah. So how do you know where to go? And again, with all the amazing marketing strategies people have out there now, you may be landing on certain aspects and certain pages that may not be delivering the most applicable advice, let's just mm -hmm. say. And what we try to do is really help people again, connect their body to their mind and back down to their body, mind to body. Mm. Um, because I think few people are feeling lost. Mm -hmm. And we have empathy for that because, you know, this slogan, move better, live happier, it embodies the internal struggle that we all have. Mm -hmm. 
which is living happy. And what, what we are trying to do, or what we are doing, is giving people movement strategies to feel free, mm -hmm. movement strategies to perform on the field, movement strategies to perform for their children so they feel enough. Mm -hmm. And I love to be a part of that journey because it's, it's, it's within all of us. We right. all struggle with it, you know? And I'm just glad to, to be able to help people connect to, to their body through our work. And so what would you say is um, something simple that people can do on the daily mm -hmm. um, that oh, man. can, you know, help them in their... Man, I mean, we have, a lot, we have resources online that we post, you know, like we're fairly active on, on Instagram and, and YouTube. And we have these routines, which we are actually, I love that you asked that question because we're going to be getting together with my boy, Mike Ogata. Shout out to Mike. He shot my amazing wedding video um, and he does a lot of content <laughs> nice. for us. Beautiful. Um, we are going to be shoot, we're going to be shooting a routine that people can do mm -hmm. for um, joint mobility that they can implement in their morning so they can start off their day right mm -hmm. to serving their joints so their joints can serve them back during the day. Mm -hmm. So we, we can find a way to, and you can reach out to me and yeah. I can send those videos out, man. And I think it's important that we, we do that to serve our body. Perfect. And yeah. so what would you say? Just give me one or two. One or two? Like, yeah. People that are watching this right now are like, all right, what can I do right now? Oh, man, do you really want to stand up and try it? Is that what, oh, is can that, we stand up? Can we stand up? Are we good? Yeah. You stand up? All right. All right let me. See. I'm gonna give this guy one technique. Oh, let's great. stand up. Just right, right here. Real quick. Yeah. Just stand up. I right thought now. you were just gonna talk about oh, it, but we're actually gonna. Yeah, do I gotta it. make you do it, man. Oh, so why don't you stand up, man? All right. Man, I'm like the most like All right. flexible. All right. We're gonna show. We're gonna show this guy. So this is called shoulder. <laughs> this is different, y'all. Shoulder this is cars. Different. Shoulder controlled articular rotations. So we do these movements called cars to take your joint through its full capable range of motion. So what you're gonna do with me, we're gonna do the left so we don't run into each other here. Okay. All right, so with your left hand or left arm, you're- I'm Nervous, why, yeah, why am I nervous? So <laughs> what I want you to do is tighten up your quads, tighten up your glutes, Okay. stiffen up that core of yours. Okay. With that left arm, go ahead nice and slow, raise your arm up like you're moving through molasses. Move it through that range and create some tension, man, all the way to the top of that range. Now look at your bicep, keeping that elbow straight. You're gonna reach back, take a look at me now and you're gonna rotate and turn that bicep around as you reach back into extension. And wind up that shoulder, turn it around to where your hand ends up being by area. you go, perfect. Okay. Now from here, okay. reach back all the way, capture as much extension as you can okay. without, don't lean okay. towards me. Brother. Oh, don't <laughs> lean. me lean. Stay here. Did you see and me then, do that? Yep, and well, you'll see that, common well, compensation. Common? Well, you're stealing from your spine to get motion at your shoulder, so oh, we gotta respect that. So stay up tall for me, and then now continue. It's just a that. little detail. The details. The details. Now continue. On oh my that. gosh, I'm like shaking. Yep, and come back around nice and slow. So that's one little tidbit for that the shoulder. Can... Because think about where people are living right here. They're not taking, I, I mean, we can get away through a and whole day with that? just reaching through here and then never taking you all the way through here. And how many times should I, we be doing this? Oh, man, at least twice in each direction, for sure. For mm, sure. Both, and then both okay. sides, yeah. So the re That's so interesting. Right, so simple. So simple, but we forget that we don't take our bodies through these ranges of motion uh -huh. um, on a daily basis, which is why we struggle with stiffness and pain. One of the yeah, yeah, reasons yeah. why we struggle with stiffness and pain as we get older, right? Because our joints right. start to perceive this information that it's not receiving on a daily basis. So it says, right. why do I need to keep this flexibility or mobility? He's not using this. Right. Your body's smart. Body's but if you serve smart. it, your body's prepared. That's good. So anyway, that's, that's good. one little tidbit. I feel one like little... I need to do the other side. Yeah, I, I would have showed guess. the hips, but yeah, I saw no. the jeans. It would have it restricted <laughs> a little bit. So. And it's simple movements. It's, again, wakening our body so that we can be prepared to do the other things that we need to do in life or whatnot. Yes. And so let's say I'm a student who wants to become a physical therapist, physiotherapist, PT. Can yep. I, should I just say PT? Uh, physiotherapist. Physiotherapist. PT, people mix it with personal training. So That's true. Uh, a physiotherapist. Um, what do you suggest I do during college so that I can elevate um, my career? Yeah, good question, man. Um, I think one of my, the strongest advice is to go to as many different settings, outpatient, inpatient, um, and volunteer. Get, get in different settings. If you've gone to two outpatient, go to five, go to mm -hmm. six, because the experiences are going to vary tremendously. 
and I think it's so important that you get exposed before you make your decision of pursuing it or not pursuing it. Mm -hmm. um, ask questions. Mm -hmm. Meet people that are actually inspired to do the work because I've met a lot of people that regret not going into physio once they started to see what the potential could be in our field. Mm -hmm. um, it's, and I think a lot of that is attributed to the fact that they were speaking to, to possibly owners or people that were in the field that were inspired to do more. Mm -hmm. And it's sad to me because I feel so blessed to do what we do. Mm -hmm. And what would you say for those that graduated college that want to, again, up-level the career or, or get, even get into the career, get in. what, do you, what do you suggest? Um, it would be similar advice, but I will say I think one of the best skills that a physio can, can really attain or develop mm -hmm. is the, the ability to connect. So like you always preach, you know, working on personal development, mm -hmm. I think that's a huge investment that has paid paid me dividends because I really had no business doing this. Mm -hmm. I had no business owning a business. Right. And now speaking here in front of you, it's it's very humbling. Mm -hmm. um, I am, you know, like leading up to this when I received your message, <laughs> man, it like really, you're, you're like that Cupid that like, <laughs> you know, threw the arrow right in my heart, bro. Like, cause it really, it really right. hit me. And I want people to realize how important relationships are in your trajectory of wanting you to become something bigger than who you are today. Right. Um, so I think that's extremely important, which I don't think a lot of programs will talk about. Right. Because they'll say, take these classes, know your anatomy, know your physiology, which is obviously important, but that's a given. Right. We know where to reach from that, from the academic standpoint. Like I can send you guys, send people what books to read, what classes to take, but really, mm -hmm. man, it's, it's really the, the personal development side of, I think, what makes a great physio amazing. And so I know we mentioned like stereotypes around physiotherapy. Yeah. And what would you say are some of those stereotypes or myths that you want to debunk? That it's not just their bands. <laughs> it's not just parallel bars. <laughs> exactly. It, it's not just for the broken person. Like I had a gal the other day, uh, where was I? Um, yeah, I think I was, uh, I was wearing my shirt and she's like, oh, what is that? Oh, is that physical therapy? Oh, man, I hate you guys. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and it's, I think it's because her it's experience. from her experience. And that's sad to me, you know? So I think when people think of PT or physiotherapy, physical therapy, they think that you have to be hurt or injured to actually utilize a service. But what we're really doing is mobility training making people more resilient and strong so they can perform in their life. Uh -huh. So that could be someone that's injured and hurt, or it could be someone that just feels stiff in their body or someone that wants to be strong as hell. Yeah. We cover right. that. And we want to empower people to, to seek out more. Right. Let's talk about, we were talking in uh, the dressing room earlier about like growing up, right? Yeah. From where you're from and what that was like, especially being, you know, Filipino and all that goodness. Let's talk about that. So yeah. you growing up being in a predominantly, you know, white neighborhood or whatever and yeah, trying yeah. to make your way through it. Yeah, you know, I lived in Fremont my first five years. So um, from there I moved to Danville. My, 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 my pops moved us out there and I lived there from being from five years old to about 12, 13. And then I ended up moving to Washington State shortly after that for, for high school. Uh -huh. which kind of similar scenario, different neighborhood, but very similar scenario in which I was the, I would say, token Filipino. Uh -huh. And I started to realize as I navigated through life, um, and a lot of it had to do with me reflecting on why did I ha have so many insecurities and um, um, I guess not cowardly behavior, but I was just fearful of so many different things. and fearful of what people thought of me. And I think a lot of it had to do with me being the only person of color in this school. And all I was trying to do was assimilate to whatever it took to fit in. Mm -hmm. And the issue with that was a lot of my family lived in Union City in Fremont where there's a lot of, Fili Filipinos, as you know, a yeah. lot of Filipinos. Yeah. And so whenever I hung out with family, I always felt like I was too white to fit in with them. So interesting, you're right? Just, you're just trying to. I'll just fit in. You're yeah. trying to be you. And there was no hate, no nothing. But it was like, 
you know, friendly, friendly joking, like, yeah. oh, Joey's too whitewashed to understand that, or, right. you know, and it hurt, man, because, yeah. you know, like, I just wanted to identify with my people, and this is why I was telling you earlier mm -hmm. why sports has such a huge place in my heart, because that was my only way of feeling confident by myself. Mm. It was how I held my identity, and I tell my wife this all the time, and how much the team sports has really cultivated how I approach life and how I love elevating other people because on the court, man, when there's one ball, you got four other guys with you against five other guys that aren't wearing the same color as you, you want to eat them up. All right, 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 right. And that confidence that you build when you succeed together was amazing. Mm -hmm. And what I realized through it was we need to have empathy for people that feel left out mm. and give them a voice. And so how does that translate to the work you do right now? Do you feel like you're a minority in this particular field? Um, I, I do. I do. Um, not, and I think I, I, I do take that, I take that role seriously because looking at this field and not being able to identify with people that were at least in the social media spotlight. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that look like me also doing it, but mm -hmm. uh, I would say in the spotlight of social media, Instagram, YouTube, I don't see a lot of people that look like me. So I had a hard time aspiring to be this be, because naturally, just like I, I would say probably the same correlate to Jeremy Lin to NBA basketball, mm. he gave a lot of Asians permission to pursue it. Right. Right. And so I want to be able to give other people of color and uh, people that look like me permission to pursue whatever the hell they want. You know, especially in the field of physiotherapy. And with that said, what would you say is something you wish you would have known earlier on in your career? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I wish, I wish I respected my own voice earlier. Ooh, yes. I wish, and I still we we still battle. Sure. With hiding our voice. But I being think. aware of that. But being aware of it, and I, this is a, that was a, it's funny that you asked that question because I think the first time I realized that my voice was being heard was when I invited my family to your workshop, brother. Wow. And I, just I, got the chills. I, it was crazy, bro. Like really, I always tell people the two things I took away from your workshop, um, that was in Berkeley, yeah? I think mm -hmm. it was in Berkeley. And the Al two, Alameda. Alameda, Alameda, sorry. Um, the two things I took away from it was, one, that my family really does listen to some of the things that I have to say, which meant a lot, because they showed up, mm -hmm. like probably nine or ten of them. But secondly, I think what you showed to me was how powerful a human can be for someone else. Wow. Because you reached out to me at a time where I was so lost, but I was searching for something. Mm -hmm. And I got that call on Highway 4 in Concord. Joey, what's up, man? It's Romeo. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who, hello, like, yeah, who's, and you're, you're like, you commented on my Instagram twice, but so I didn't comment back, so here I am, reaching out, what's good? And I was just like, yo, this is weird as fuck. <laughs> I, was like, this, I was like, this is, what is it, like four, three, four years ago? Four or five. Four or five, Yeah, wow. four, yeah, yeah, four or five years ago, okay. somewhere there. And it was crazy, because your little invitation to coming to your workshop changed the trajectory of my life. And so with the utmost gratitude, man, like really, yeah. you really changed how I look at life and that moment was huge uh -huh. for me because I am now doing so many things in my life that I never thought was possible. So yeah, that, that was a huge portion of I appreciate that. Sometimes, man. you know, when I do this work of inspiration and empowering people to live out their greatness, you know, you lose sight because there's so many people, there's a big audience, it's a small workshop, but you drop so many seeds, but there's specific individuals like yourself that will, you know, not only know the principles, but will work the principles. And for you to, again, empower that to the work that you're doing, it puts things in per, into perspective uh, with what I do that keeps me going. Yeah. And so you just sharing that, I'm in gratitude for you to you know, just aspire and do what you do because it's helping so many people. Thank and you. so my next question to that is what keeps you going? My why. 
what is your why? Let's talk about, yeah, Simon Sinek and oh, philosophy. Si shout out to Simon Sinek, yeah. man. I, um, I, my why is, you know, it's funny because it, it's constantly evolving. Uh -huh. But I think the root of it is really, like I was telling you in the room, about elevating people. Um, physiotherapy just happens to be my main vehicle right now, uh -huh. uh, which is why the logo is, uh -huh. is integral to everything that we do. And what I remind myself is, what do I want out of it? And why am I doing this? And if whatever I'm doing is serving a purpose of elevating someone's life, whether it is through my hands and helping them with movement, uh -huh. or it's having conversations like this. Uh -huh. And any decision that I make has to be in alignment with that. Otherwise, it's just noise that's distracting me from my main purpose. That's beautiful. Thank you. And so I kind of want to like step back here. Yeah. Has there been, because in the discovery of your why, you have to go through a lot of things to, you know, deepen that thought of what our purpose is or whatnot. And what would you say is a challenge or a failure that you've gone through in your life that um, has impacted you in some shape or form and how did you overcome it? I think working in a variety of PT settings where I was seeing like 20 plus people in a day working for I'm gonna working for owners that I think had their morals and ethics in different places of not great practices of mm -hmm. taking advantage of people. Mm -hmm. um, I saw the very the negative aspect of what we do as PTs in I would say insurance-based clinics mm -hmm. because of the high volume. So people get caught up in this. I, th I think in this um, motivation to just make money strictly mm -hmm. by any means necessary. And so I was working at all these different places and feeling empty. And like, I, even though you were doing the work, you I was were doing the still work. Feeling empty, isn't that interesting? Yeah. The only time I felt lifted was when I would connect with someone, but because the environments that I was placed in, um, it, it, I wasn't able to serve yeah. that whole entity because I had like 15 minutes with a person, like, yeah. move, move, move. And so like, I was at this, and right now that's like two, three years into my, my career as a PT, I was so lost, bro. And I'm, I was fortunate enough to run into this Craigslist ad um, Elisa Herrera set, who I think you have met. Mm, yeah, um, I remember. She had a job posting, a job posting, which happened to be just an interview to see who can she sublease to to start their own practice, which I had no desire. I had zero <laughs> desire to start my own practice. But I think because of the feeling of not having any fulfillment mm -hmm. and feeling like, did I really just spend that much money to go to grad school to do this? Right. And that, that's a scary, it's a scary feeling that I think a lot of people that graduate from programs start to feel if right. they don't, if they land in a position that um, they don't feel, um, I, I think, fulfilled to do. Um, but I think it was, it was the realization of, I need to do something to put my destiny in my own control, right? That's right. I had to make, I was tired of blaming others for my own circumstances. I was tired of complaining. Um, and I just became, I started to become a person that I didn't want to be around. Interesting. And that's a struggle, right? Mm -hmm. Because I know inherently my heart was huge, but because of my unhappiness, I was not showing myself to the world. So then I think when Elisa gave me an opportunity to start my own thing, that was the beginning of making a decision to get over the fears, the insecurities, mm -hmm. and begin that journey of owning myself. That's beautiful, man. Thank you. Thank it just makes me think about those that might be watching that are in their struggle, their fears, their um, just feeling lost. What would you say is something you would you'd like to share in regards to that to break out of that funk, if you will? Well, I think there's, I mean, there's a lot of things, but if I had to say one thing is really think deep about what makes you feel alive. And I know that's, I know that sounds very cliche. But it's so true. But a lot of things become cliche because they're true. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> that's good. Right? Yeah. And I, because I was kind of the skeptic, like, oh, that's so cliche. Why would you say that? But yeah. there's a reason why these things and words and sayings start to gain traction mm -hmm. is because we realize that it is. And um, I think if people can really dive deep into what their, what their purpose, cause, and belief is, just like any business looks at, mm -hmm. I think for yourself, think about what serves you mm -hmm. and find a way to integrate whatever you end up choosing for your career to integrate that. And Tony Robbins always talks about this and how work-life integration, right? Because people always ask that question, like, how do you balance right. work and life? Mm -hmm. But I feel so freaking blessed, bro, to, to say that I've just integrated my business with my life because it serves people uh -huh. and it fits what I told you about my why, elevating others. Uh -huh. And so there's not, there's not a disconnect between what I do for progressive motion and what I need to do for Joey Salgado. Uh -huh. And I think it's so important because I think we try to categorize. We think that if I get this job, I will be so happy. But people often find that it's very empty on the other side. Uh -huh. And it's a common struggle. And mm -hmm. I just hope that people can at least start to have that conversation with themselves and reach out to podcasts, audio books. Mm -hmm. And I, man, I'd love to recommend whatever. <laughs> like Simon Sinek is a good start with helping you understand how leaders inspire action. Is that, I know he has a book. What, what specific start resource? With, start with why is, is the, the book. book. Yeah. But to get a, sne a sneak peek to his message, it's like a 16, 17 minute TED Talk video on why and mm -hmm. why it's so important to start there. Um, versus the what and the how. Right, right. And um, yeah, that was the beginning of, I think, understanding how easy marketing could be also. Because if you just be, if you're just authentic with your message, mm -hmm. people will start to hear it. And That's I'm, right. Yeah. Um, you brought up earlier on connections and how yeah, that yeah, really, yeah, yeah. you know, elevates you and elevates others um, who have been, you know, specific people uh, let's let's be more specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mentors. Who is a mentor that you have or mentors that you have and what advice have they given you that has helped you? Wow. Um, so obviously I have to start with you and I've, I've already touched on it. Um, <laughs> I, I look up to you tremendously and because of what you serve for me, I've owned, you know, I know I'm saying this multiple times. I know. Like, it's making me go, ah, yeah, but yeah, I have yeah. to, but and that's the thing. Take my, this in, though, bro. I, I like, appreciate really. that because I, I, I know you don't want to, but this is important for me sure. to say, especially on your platform. <laughs> um, um, and from, you know, obviously from the personal development side, you are one of the biggest influences. Um, I will say through, just like you mm -hmm. growing up, books and podcasts be became your mentors. Tony Robbins' work has really mm -hmm. influenced my mindset over, um, everything that's been happening and um, I think my own discovery mm -hmm. of myself. Um, Claire Frank, um, she's a physio huh. from uh, SoCal. She is one of the most influential people on Josh and I's practice and my life because her mission as well is to elevate the field of physiotherapy. Huh. And she could do so many other things and make huge amounts of money but her purpose is serving us to share with the world how powerful our field is. Right. And I've spent, we probably, Josh and I have probably flown down to LA probably at least 10 to 15 times to take her coursework. And we are now, which is why it's crazy, she's gonna be hosting her class April through July wow. next year in our space. Dope. And we're TA, so she's a huge influence on the physiotherapy side. And what would you say is like a piece of advice that she's given you or just, you know, shown by example that yeah. has helped you? I think her, she's just demonstrating how deep, how deeply rooted her why is and her mission. So it goes back to the why. It goes back to the why. And because I, I see it, right? Like she could do so many other things, but yet she is spending out endless hours educating us on how to serve our, our patients better. Mm -hmm. Because I think we have an obligation to make sure that we do that for um, the people that are, looking for physiotherapy. And so it goes back to the why for her. Mm -hmm. um, and another person that I'm gonna shout out is Jason Maiden. Um, Who is? Jason Maiden is, I don't even know how to answer that question. He's a father, he's a serial entrepreneur. Um, he, he served for Nike, and, or he, he worked for Nike and Jordan and designed shoes 
for Michael Jordan, Russell Westbrook, Chris Paul, you man, you name it. Um, he now has a company called Super Heroic. Um, the headquarters are now in in Oakland called the Hero Lab. Hmm. Um, but what he's done for me is I look at a man that's extremely busy in life, but also serving a deeper purpose. And while serving as a father for his, for his children at home, mm-hmm. but also being an amazing husband at the same time. Mm. And I admire the hell out of him because of his, his introspection on life and the wisdom that he provides about um, how to integrate your purpose within your work, but also taking care of the people at home and making sure that you, you love hard and do amazing shit too. <laughs> I love, like I love his stuff, you know, and I gotta go um, check that out. Yeah, for sure. What do you want to be remembered for? I think if I, you know, when it's all said and done, if, if people can look back at my story is to, to remember that there's a way out of feeling lost and Maiden said this, he said, there's something that struck me. He says, while you wait for your blessing, you can be one. Mm. And I think we get caught up in this race of wanting to achieve and achieve, but we forget we can literally be blessings for anyone today. And I think if I can pass that message on to people to serve others now and not wait for some kind of magical transformation, right? I think that transformation will end up coming anyway right and I think you're doing that in your work already and that's why I've been able to slowly but surely find my voice perfect and last question around this um, especially those that are wanting to live out a career that brings them to life yeah yeah. or those who want to live out their passion what is the message you want to share to them man um, I think Really, look, gratitude. I think I I I really wholeheartedly believe that if you can practice gratitude on a daily basis, it will be your antidote of complaining and anxiety, and wishing for external things to come into your life to serve you happiness. Right. Because I think if you put things in constant perspective, there's a lot of people out there that are are dealing with a lot of struggles that are worse than what you're dealing with right now. Uh-huh. So if you gain that perspective, you'll be able to serve, to serve the people around you a little bit more effectively. And I think you'll be able to love yourself a little bit more. Mm. And if you can do that, then you give more. Damn, you're deep, bro. <laughs> I love it. I'm learning from you, bro. I love it. I love it. So we're going to wrap this up yeah. with uh, some rapid fire questions. And so oh. I want you to you know, answer with Damn. the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. okay. We're going to have fun with this. Ready? All right. Ready? Let's do it. All right, so what's your favorite day of the week? Oh, man, uh, Monday. Nickname your parents used to call you or call you now? Joey Boy. <laughs> Just add the one. Uh, one of your favorite quotes? Oh, I think I, I kind of already said mm-hmm. it. While you wait for your blessing, you can be a blessing. There you go. Uh, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Whew. Coaching. Um, favorite breakfast food? Pancakes, sausages, and bacon, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than Simon Sinek's book, uh, name another book that you, you've read that has positively shaped you. How to Win Friends and Influence People. Dale Carnegie. Yep. There you go. Uh, who haven't you worked with yet that you'd you know, eventually like to work with? Steph Curry. Oh, that's going to happen. Steph Curry, if you're watching this. <laughs> yeah. Got your boy over here. Uh, first word that comes to mind in Tagalog. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why, but what? <laughs> hey, I said first thing. You said first thing, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. We might use that, we might not. But yeah, you don't go. have to use that. Hey, but it's the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, <laughs> 
<laughs> the most glutes, use- man. I mean, it's yeah, yeah exactly, shit, exactly. You know? uh, the most useful product or service under a hundred dollars that you bought this year. Under a hundred dollars, man. Ooh, that was tough. So many. Yeah, um, first thing that comes to mind. Uh, a personal development book, um, some some uh, digital marketing stuff on okay. for our business. Cool. Um, who or what else inspires you? Seeing, I think, seeing people do amazing things on um, social media, living out their life and living with full purpose and fulfillment. Love it. Love seeing that. Perfect. Uh, favorite childhood TV show? I love Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yes. If you could have any three people, dead or alive, over for dinner, who would they be? Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> Reggie Miller, Steph Curry, and I would say, because of what work, the work that he's done, Tony Robbins. Uh, best gift you've ever received? The ability to the ability to love, man. My mom gave passed that down to me. Love I it. think the ability to love, man. Advice to your younger self. It'll be all right. You're enough. Mm. You are enough, and share your message with the world. Uh, what does a person need to be happy? I think integrating their purpose with what they do in their daily life. And if you're not doing it, seek it because it's out there. Last words of advice. Be good to people. I think in this world right now, I think people are are threatened by the negativity that's surfacing online. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to grow up to, I, I think we need to band together and, and, and man, just connect and share knowledge and wisdom to, to unlock other people's potential. And I think, I think it's important for us to do that with full obligation, man, because it's, it's important that people discover themselves. Amen. So speaking of connection, where can people connect with you, find you and you know, get some movement going. Yeah, yeah. You know? So we're on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Progress Emotion PT. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think my handle is Dr. Joey, Doc, Dr. Period. You a doctor? Do- doctor of PT. Hey, you a doctor. Dr. Joey, <laughs> you a doctor? I should introduce you as Dr. Joey. No, nah, no, nah, don't do all that. No, <laughs> no. Nah, nah. um, yeah, what's D- your handle? I'm sorry. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Period Joey underscore D O O. Yeah, so you can find me there and just, yeah, um, easy, up. easy easy, to get a, um, a hold of. Perfect. Well, I thank you so much. You spit so much knowledge, and um, you're a gift, man. You are definitely a blessing. I appreciate you, bro. Thanks, bro. Yes. No, thank you for your time, man. Appreciate it. Oop, there it is. And...